Hey everybody, surprise, huh? Welcome to this new show. This is really cool. I think you're going to have a lovely time. It's called Relaxing and Painting with Luigi. This is going to be so cool. Glad you could take your time to visit us. Let me welcome to the show the great painter and my brother, Luigi. Hey, Luigi, what's going on? It's okay here. <laughs> only, only a little bit hot. <laughs> it's hot in Italy, huh? Yeah, 30 degrees. Yeah, man. Pretty soon, uh, at least the nighttime, uh, you got the a little fan, maybe? You have a little fan to keep you. Could be cool. <laughs> yeah, I have one. Oh, Not that... so big. Oh, that's cool, but... man. So anyhow, we. Uh, I want to introduce everybody to you because you and I have been friends a long time. Actually, I think uh, you and I met in Italy the first time I saw you, but we met online, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Internet. Yeah, yeah. We met in uh, Levico. It was a great place, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. You know uh, that that was just when I was starting to endorse the Mojo Company. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, so anyhow, everybody, Luigi takes care of all my artwork for all my stuff. So all that beautiful art that you see, Luigi. He does it for me, and he never asked me for anything. So I decided when I started my students and friends group that Luigi and I kind of put these art together, and we started the students and friends group. Do you mind, Luigi? I'll show them. So this is some of the art that Luigi does. This is our student and friends artwork that's basically there during the uh, artwork for my show. There you go. Wow, that's pretty cool stuff. How about that? <laughs> All of the graphics Luigi does, yeah. So anyhow, Luigi, tell me, how long you been painting? Uh, I started three years ago, maybe four. Uh, I started with the watercolor with um, a painter here in Venice. And he teached me to, to paint the basics of watercolor and then oils and then he left me to move myself yeah and he said me you have to paint so wow that's pretty cool huh <laughs> yeah wow you're quite a painter though i tell you look at the i i just received this in the mail tonight look at that i got the painting the actual one from luigi yeah it's strange it, it was in my my room Yes, five years, five days ago. <laughs> now now it's, it's in the other <laughs> part of the world. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So what we decided we're going to do is a collaborative to start adding some of my friends and students <clears throat> to play the organ behind Luigi while he paints a painting. And what we're going to do is when we flip the screen here in a moment, actually you're going to be able to talk to Luigi through the messaging. So he'll see all of your messages because I'll share that with him. And you'll be watching a video of him painting and he, as he explains what's going on. You'll just see me down on the bottom. I'm just going to practice and play some music because it's not about me. It's about Luigi. So Luigi, welcome to your first show, man. And thanks for trying this with us. Thank you, Tony, You're for welcome. hosting me. You're welcome. Here you are. Now I'm going to share my screen, Luigi. We're doing this live, so everybody, you know. Whoa, let me make sure I got the right one for you. Okay, Luigi, can you see the comments? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow, we're doing it. It's working. Okay, so everybody, 
Luigi can see your comments, and I'll be scrolling them along, and you're going to now watch the painting. Enjoy the it's show. It's really experimenting here. Yeah. <laughs> So, I think painting is something relaxing and usually I listen to music when I paint, so having live music is better. And, you know, painting is something you feel. So, I was in my garden yesterday and I and I saw this tree uh, I think it's pomegranate maybe I don't know in English what's the name it's oh, melograno in Italian. and uh, it was so nice with this reflection on it so I decided to take a picture and, and paint it Now I'm just uh, laying down the first strokes just to define the shapes. You know, in, in painting, the most important part is values. So the difference between dark and light. Um, I mean, you, you, you can have a, an incredible drawing but if values are not respected, it will be flat. It's like music when, when, you, when you play without expression, it's flat. So at the first time I fix some strokes just to define masses. to understand where values are going to be. <clears throat> I mean, I, I try to speak in time with the music, so <laughs> I'm not going to disturb so much the listening. I love it. <laughs> So Tony is going to comping on my voice. <laughs> yeah. I'm soloing. <laughs> the best part in painting is, is it's like, it's the same as you play. You, you start with your solo and probably you don't know exactly where are you going to finish. At some point you decide that you you say all you had to say and you decide to stop it. Did you see this hanging on the tree or was this in your mind? <laughs> yeah. It was in your mind? Yeah, you know. No, no, the, the tree, uh, I saw the tree, so I, I took a picture to have a reference. Uh -huh. Because, I mean, it, you can do it from your mind, but the risk is to idealize too much ah. and and it could be it could feel artificial and it's not what I what I like uh -huh. so you see I I, I laid down only I, I'm painting mostly with one color at the moment uh -huh. so it's only to to fix the messes 
and to say this part is dark, this part is light, maybe here it's something undefined or a mid-tone. And, and if you if you notice that the beginning I didn't start it from um, uh, a white panel, but it was prepared ah. with a with a mid tone, like the canvas behind you uh -huh. was not white, but but with a mid tone, uh -huh. and it's useful it's useful to define the the mid value and the limit of the dark and the light. And sometimes when you are lazy, it can be can solve in some way the part of the mid tone because sometimes the the canvas or the panel the panel can be seen through the painting and be part of the painting. Then for me, it's important to fix the the lighter part as I did with the darkest. You can see that only with two colors is just gaining depth. The tree is coming forward behind the background. Yeah, it's a nice music. <laughs> Jose, have you a question or was only to say hello? Oh, thanks, Jen. And you know, I usually like more to paint portraits. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but uh, when you study art or painting, usually the human figure is, uh, you know, the, the most difficult to paint because you have to reach likeness, uh, maybe an expression, an expression or whatever. And, oh, thank you, Melissa. And you know, uh, painting landscapes or nature, like this one is, uh, in some way more demanding for me because there are too too many things to to watch too painting is is mostly to learn to paint is mostly learn to to see things when you learn to to see what you are seeing and understand values, understand colors, understand if a color is more um, cold or is more on the hot side uh, or if that shape is uh, more geometric or, or less, or can be um, simplified in a sphere or in a cube or in a solid, just to, to define the volumes. 
is the, is the first part when you paint. Oh, happy you like it, Melissa. Um, so when when you learn to to see things. Uh, you can try and begin to to move them in in something different that's painting or drawing or whatever. Um, so I was saying that I prefer portraits because um, for me it's easier to focus on a face than on a big landscape or you know, something like a fruit or whatever that has a lot of subtle difference when i have to paint a portrait uh, i can focus on the expression and it's easier for me to understand if the if the portrait is going to to be nice or not i have some maybe i mean maybe i'm lucky i, I have some talent to to catch the expression the likeness of people um, And I didn't paint uh, any. Oh yeah, one. Yeah, I paint once uh, an en uh, an entire body, but usually I focus only on uh, on the face. Um, in some way, because uh, I don't like to keep a painting on my easel for too too much time. Because there's something I I call the the killer brush stroke. Oh man! It's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's it's my concept. I mean, when you when you work on the same pine, the same painting too much time, there's a there's a moment when when you must understand you have to stop to work on it. Because when you when you overwork your painting, you're going to, to ruin it. And there's no way to come back. Uh, like the yeah, the portrait of Tony, you you think you can see very little in behind Tony now. It's something I did with a few brush strokes in a really expressive way because I wanted to catch that that expression that Tony had in that picture. He was playing and he was feeling the music and it was what I wanted to to put in my painting. Uh, Melissa. Uh, this is a, an interesting question. Because I have a, a little color blindness, so I don't see all the colors as I have I have been supposed to to see them. I have some uh, color blindness between greens and blues you know, on very dark colors. So, but in any case, uh, the color is some in some ways uh, less important than value. So the first thing is value. Uh, dark and light give that to to the paintings. Um, then about the color, this is um, um, a real challenge at the end because you know my master once told me. Um, one of the most difficult things to paint 
are mountains with a, a, a wooden house and trees. Because when you put um, blue, brown and green together, they don't fit so so well. They get a flat, muddy result. Because this is um, in some way we, we think we see some colors, but they are not. I mean, um, you know that the, the tree is brown with green leaves um, and the grass is green and the wood is brown and the sky is blue. But really, if you start to, to see deeply in what you see, you can see that the sky is not blue. There's a lot of color in it. Some red, some yellow. Um, what you know is brown, sometimes it's not brown. It's uh, like a dark blue because it is in the, in the shadow side. And when, it's, when the, the light comes through it, it could become a, a white or maybe uh, a really bright yellow and even the green of the leaves is not green there's some blue in the shadows there's some yellow in the, in the light some white in the highlight <clears throat> the problem is we we learn from from our childhood that some colors I mean you learn when you're a child that the skin is pink but it's not the skin is mostly on the gray side with some green shadows where the veins come out with some red shadows when the skin is uh, more thinner. Uh, so in some way, I, I'm not so techni technical when I paint. Uh, I know many, many painters that are really skilled about uh, color study. Mm, they know exactly what color they are going to use. They see all the subtle changes in color. Uh, I'm still learning, so uh, sometimes I try. Um, I, I paint with a very limited color palette. Mostly with a palette that's called the Zorn palette. That's um, derived from um, a painter called Zorn. And he used mostly um, white, yellow ochre, uh, cadmium red, uh, and black. I add some color, like the ultramarine blue and some raw amber. Um, sometime, sometimes I use both uh, ultramarine blue mixed with, uh, with the raw amber or burnt amber to, uh, to make my own black. Is that typically Italian? What do you mean exactly? Um, I was saying, uh, yeah, I use mostly this palette because um, it's more challenging 
you can mix all the color you need from this only few colors um, oh uh, no 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 they are not typically Italian I mean the pigments are something uh, that's used uh, everywhere in the world um, a big part of the earth uh, pigments yeah comes from Italy like uh, burnt sienna rose sienna Venetian red um, but only because um, we have the rest with the renaissance the renaissance uh, period so uh, most the most part of the standard pigments are uh, derived from that period so um, some way they are defined as the standard earth color or whatever. Um, and Zorn was was not Italian. The painter I uh, I was speaking about before uh, it was uh, I don't remember from north of the Europe. I don't remember where exactly. Um, And having only few colors help you to keep um, a sort of harmony in the painting. because they are in some way related one to another and you're not out of tune uh, as Tony could say <laughs> and you see like in the leaves in the leaves of the tree I'm painting. Mm. There are a lot of greens. Uh, there's no one green. I mean, you know, the, the leaves are green. Okay, I take a green and I paint the green on the leaves. So, if you notice in the painting, I I, I put some uh, raw um, ultramarine blue in the middle of the leaves, in the shadow parts. And then I mix it. Uh, maybe two or three different greens and I'm going to change them again when I when it comes to to the light part and to the highlight part like the process <laughs> Oh this is cool you got Grazie Alessandro <laughs> Alessandro è qui eh <laughs> it's one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Welcome, Alessandro. <laughs> this is 
great, Luigi. I think people are enjoying it. I think so. If you want to follow me, I have an Instagram account, so... Hey, Luigi, why don't you put that in the messenger? Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste it. <laughs> okay. Right? Right. Hey, Lisa. Difficult to make things. Well, I'll take a commercial break for you there for a second. So remember, there's Thanks. a link on the very bottom that'll take you to a, my website and a special page that allows you to give one donation to both of us. And the future is, my thoughts is that some of my friends and students can be playing the organ during Luigi's Paint Show. And they can share the gratuity. So this is a project to help employ some of my friends and Luigi yeah man because it's all about survival <laughs> <laughs> right Luigi so tell them what you're doing now man It's a complicated name. It's do a doodle a day. <laughs> uh, Dennis, uh, yeah, I think uh, Granada is the same as Melograno in Italian or Pomegranate in, in English. Yeah. <clears throat> Neither Tony playing is sad near really. <laughs> but we can ask some funk maybe later. I don't know. <laughs> some funk? You bet. <laughs> oh, as, as you can see, I, I started to paint some different green on the leaves. there a contrast? I don't think so. Oh, this is a big question. Uh, I think... Hmm. Let's start from the beginning. Um, my master is from the Venetian school of painting that comes from Tiziano, from Tiepolo, uh, Veronese, uh, Bellini. Maybe you know you know the drink Bellini, but it's derived from the painter. Um, and 
and then from some late uh, 18th century painters um, from Venice that was um, that were Fabretto, um, the Chardis family, um, Ettore Tito, and others. But probably uh, the the painter I like the most because I think he he was a genius, a real genius. Is John Singer Sargent? That uh, who had an interesting life because he was American. But he moved with uh, his family in Florence. And when he, he was a child, and he lived in Florence and he studied in Florence Academy. And then he, he moved. So in, in some way, he was Italian uh, as an artist. Then he moved to Paris and studied with uh, Carolus Duran. And then he moved to London when uh, in Paris he painted a very famous painting that was Madame X. It was Madame Goutreau. Because he painted a really uh, sexy pose of her that was not accepted at the end of 1800 and so he had not so so much success with that painting then he moved to London that was more free to paint whatever he wanted and he became the the most important portrait painter of the Victorian age painted, I don't know, hundreds of, of portraits of very famous people. Um, and he was a master in every technique. Oil, watercolor. He did fantastic watercolor. At some point of his life, he, he decided to um, refuse uh, commission for portraits and go around and started to paint mostly um, what painter call en plein air outside painting from life landscapes mostly he went to Venice, to Venice and painted a lot of Venice watercolor. Anyway, I, I think he was a real, real geni genius and I love it. I tried to copy, to make a master copy of one of his portraits. And it's not so bad. Maybe at the end of the show, I, I can show you, Melissa, the, the result. It's not bad. Sometimes I like to take challenges just to challenge myself and say, OK, I can do it. What I want to say is that uh, I don't believe in what uh, it's normally defined natural talent. Uh, because it's um, in some way reductive in the, in the work. 
and the job that, yeah you know in the in the process that someone do to learn something the the real natural talent could only speed up your your path but the most important part is to study and to practice a lot in painting in music whatever everyone can paint everyone can play some instruments it's only a matter of time and uh, and keep practicing and accept critics and learn from mistakes and try to do every day something more do you agree tony oh man i'm always gonna push it (laughs) (laughs) this is great man Keep things simple. You can say many things with only few notes, few brush strokes. You don't need to impress We don't know what time this is officially going to be, but we thought today would be a good day to start, right, Luigi? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. We decided at 10 this morning we were going to do this show, didn't we? <laughs> it was like last minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I woke up at 6 a.m. I couldn't sleep, so I turned on my, you know, I visit my other organs in the morning, you know. I visit the A100, I say hello, give her a kiss, and then I go play the B3. (laughs) So I was thinking about you, you know. And I said, I wonder if Luigi's awake, you know. Of course you are. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) See, the organs, they don't get jealous when I visit the other ones. (laughs) (laughs) They play their best for me. Oh. So anyhow, we decided this morning, I said, Luigi, let's do it. And with the, this original painting, uh, Luigi, how long did it originally take you to do? Uh, what? This what painting, we, we sped it up just a little bit to make it uh, shorter, but your the whole painting time was uh, how long? Uh, one hour uh, 20. Yeah, so we just, what we did... To make it fit in an hour time, Luigi sped up the video a little bit. How did you do that? That was amazing. Uh, I used an, an, an iPad app called, uh, I don't remember, Slice, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. I thought you were going to say, we'll... I painted another one faster. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, we're really trying to make the world a better place. That's all, right, Luigi? Sorry? I think we're trying to just make the world a better place. Oh, yeah. What are you going to have? What did you have for dinner tonight? You're in Italy, man. Yeah, but tonight was a really... mm, Light dinner. Uh oh. So, a couple of zucchini. Oh, nice. Yeah. Some meat. Ah, oh, nice. And some bread. Not so much. So many things. Any olive oil? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> You're welcome, Melissa. (laughs) 
So you see, I I decided that the background was too light in value. So I tried to dark it, to dark it a little bit. Just to get the fruit out from the book the background. Anyway, what I can suggest to you If you'd like to learn to paint or to learn to play an instrument is to try. Don't think I can't do it because I, whatever. Because there are so many talented people outside there. I can I I'm sure I can't play or paint or whatever like them. Because I think it's uh, it's a matter to uh, to evolve, to get better in some way, in something. And it's not important to become the new Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo or John Singer Sargent. I mean, I mean, there was just an, a Leonardo da Vinci, a Michelangelo, a Raffaello in the history. And it's stupid to try to in some way emulate them or copy them with a purpose to become the new Raffaello or the new Leonardo, whatever. Um, learn some form of art is like to to climb uh, some stairs uh, you can make one step at a time and you can be really happy you did uh, you did that step yeah it's important to have fun but it's important to feel satisfied of um, the progress you are doing And maybe if you, what, what I can see um, is that every time I make an, or I paint a new painting and I uh, come back to, to see my old paintings, I can see the progress. And I can feel I'm getting better and better every time I paint. Mm. Or, or every time I practice uh, <laughs> some exercise that Tony gave to me <laughs> at the yeah. organ. Okay. <laughs> Probably I'm not going to become a jazz organist or a blues organist, but it's not important. It's something challenging. Okay. I'm trying and I see. Okay. Yesterday I. I I was not able to play that bass, that bass line that I practiced it for a week, and now I can quite play it. <laughs> Probably in the next week uh, I'm going to play it better and better and better. Who knows? You will. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 
as usual, practice and focusing on what you are doing and learning from mistakes is important. And another very important thing is to have a, a good master. You can learn everything by yourself, but it's a very slow process. When you have someone that can guide you and correct your mistakes, tell you when you are making mistakes, uh, critic your work, maybe helping you because sometimes I, when I paint something and I'm not sure, I send a message to my master and they say, this is the picture of the painting I'm working on it. What do you think about? And he usually have some suggestion to me and say some tip like, uh, Add a brush stroke there, um, fix the highlight in the other part, increase the darkness, change the value. Because he, he has what I have, have not, the experience. He painted for 50 years. I paint from four years, so. Uh, all the problem I'm going to to encounter on my my own path, he probably just sold. Yeah, you always improve us. As time goes by, yes, if you practice and if you focus when you practice. Because practicing without thinking is not useful at all. You must understand and focus on what you are doing. I don't know if someone had the same experience, but sometimes I... I start to paint in the evening. Um, and I keep painting and I go in a, in what I can call um, an hypnotic status where the time doesn't exist anymore. And I keep painting until I say, oh, okay, I feel a little bit tired. What, what time is it? And it's like, two in the morning and I didn't realize the the time was passing so fast it's probably something that happened to musicians too maybe they start the, the gig and they arrived at the end of the gig and they didn't realize that I don't know two hours or three hours have passed by. Because they are so involved in, in the process, they, they are, I, I can say it's uh, um, like they are hypnotized. Yeah. Wow, what a yeah. great what a great video. Thank you. What a great idea. <laughs> yeah. We're still on the air and uh let me switch off the screen share. Let me see if we don't we can still everybody can still see you. I think what I have to do yeah. is recapture this was, the wind. Is this the the end result? We're still broadcasting. It's just I Yeah. 
The Zoom, you know how it works. It gives you a little problem. Oh, there's the painting that you painted. Yeah, Whoa. I slightly changed it. It's a little darker now. Maybe that's the light. Yeah, yeah it could be. Oh, wow. Oh, I think well, I you have solved the problem. Very many cool people uh, watching this show. They're still watching now. Yeah. Oh, wow, there's the colors. Beautiful. Oh, for Melissa, I have this one. Uh, turn it more, more to the left, uh, Luigi. Yeah. Yeah, right there. And, uh, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. This is a master coffee of a sergeant painting. I can make that larger. Yes, I got it. Okay. Wow. Very cool, Luigi. Well, listen, man, thank you very much. I don't know when our next episode will be and who will be, but this is the beginning. Thank you for uh, giving it a try with me. Huh? You're welcome. And uh, I hope that... And thank you to you for hosting me. You're welcome. I wonder, I don't have on the listing how to get a hold of you. I know that we have the PayPal ME for you, but I don't know anything about uh, how they can find you other than Facebook so um yeah that's facebook and uh instagram i i sent you the message with the one moment before the instagram we name uh, 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 did you send it on my uh facebook messenger ah and uh, no moment. zoom on zoom messenger ah yeah no wonder <laughs> luigi <laughs> what what country too are many you tools in? man <laughs> ah here we go do a do a day. That's it. I got it. That's your Instagram name, right? Yeah. Okay. One moment. I just want everybody to know. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. And uh, this is the first of a really cool little process. I like it. So God bless you all. Thank you, Luigi. I'm going to take it out on the final screen here. And uh, we'll see you all in about one hour. I'll be on my 6 yeah. o'clock show, about an hour and... Uh, if, if someone minutes. have a request for the next time, maybe they can send them to you. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. I can paint everything. So the, <laughs> we're taking requests for what you want Luigi to paint next time, right? Oh, wow. That's too cool, Luigi. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank you. We'll see you all soon.